Hello everyone, so this is going to be uh, a longer video. So if you want uh, shorter videos, you can check out my 5 and 5 series. Uh, I do a series of little short 5 minute videos on different topics. So today's uh, slightly longer video is going to be about the immune system. So in this kind of troubled time with COVID and everything around, everyone is worried about their immune system. So I thought I'd do a video about how the immune system works, um, the different parts of it, and little things that might um, help to improve or to um, increase or boost your immune system. So first, what does the immune system do? So the immune system is there to protect your body. So it's to stop harmful substances or bacteria or viruses from getting inside and attacking our bodies. So then, the first part of the immune system is your outer layer, your skin. Your skin is your protection against the outside world. So both the outside, so the coverings on the outside, your skin, and then also the inside is also a part of your skin. So the lining of your mouth, of your esophagus, down into your stomach, your intestines, all through your stomach, your intestines, your colon, and out of your rectum. That lining, that entire lining, is also part of your skin. So that's also protecting you from any pathogens that are, that's coming from the outside world. So once there's a breakage or a, a le lesion in this layer, protective layer, then pathogens can come in. So either a cut on your skin on the outside, so a cut or a bruise or a, a scab or a, an open wound, on your skin that is a way that pathogens can come in so the same way on the inside this lining of your intestinal tract if there is a lesion or a, a wound then pathogens can come in so it's essential to maintain this mucosal layer on from your intestinal system because it's the barrier that's protecting you from pathogens so there are many things that can break down this barrier so for example, dairy can break down this mucosal barrier. Um, processed flour, white flour can break down this barrier. Um, some little things that I mentioned in my last five and five video, um, garlic, coffee, alcohol, um, chili, spicy chili, that can all break down this uh, barrier of yours. Garlic, I also mentioned, but that's more a, a central nervous system stimulant. It's not acting on your um, intestinal layer. A high protein, high fat diet can also inhibit this mucosal layer of um, its full protection. It can also erode this mucosal layer on the inside. Okay, so it's important to maintain the outside barrier, the skin, as well as the mucosal layer. Even your eyebrows, your your eyelashes, your the hair in your nose, they're also mucosal barriers. They are there to protect you against pathogens. Okay, so your skin is your biggest barrier against pathogens, the biggest part of your immune system. Then you also have an immune system um, inside of your body, and that's divided into two different parts, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. So the innate immune system is also called the nonspecific immune system. So it's it just attacks things that it does not recognize. So that's also where autoimmune diseases come from, is when your innate immune system, your non-specific part of your immune system, recognizes something as foreign or as a pathogen and it starts attacking it. So it's like an allergic reaction. Something comes in, your body doesn't recognize it and it attacks it. So for example, if you have a peanut allergy, it's your body that's recognizing that as foreign and dangerous and it's trying to get rid of it. So that's why you have this strong response. So it's an autoimmune, it's an immune response that's trying to attack this thing that it recognizes as a pathogen. Okay, so it's important to know that it's not specific, so it doesn't go for specifically for something. So these um, are your, your B cells, T cells, and your NK cells, or your natural killer cells that your body sends, and it goes to this thing that it recognizes as a pathogen and it attacks it. So that's why you'll get like a hives or a skin rash or inflammation or where your throat constricts because that's inflammation 
um, inflammation is a way is your body's uh, immune system fighting against something that it recognizes as foreign it's the same as when you have an injury and there's inflammation that's your immune system sending cells there to go and protect that area so that's what inflammation is inflammation is your body's way of trying to protect something so to either fight against something that's harmful or to protect it as when you have an injury so the natural killer cells the nk cells get sent to a certain part to kill harmful cells so if it's a virus or a bacteria that's wonderful because this nk or natural killer cells will go to the site and they'll actually just it's called phagocytosis but it will enter the cell and it will either explode it from the out, from the inside out it will uh, pump in some fluid which makes that cell explode or it will uh, in some way it will kill or eat or yes remove that cell and then the remnants will then get excreted out of your in either in your feces your urine uh, or in in some way your body will get rid of it then there are certain parts of your body that will that act as your immune organs so your adenoids are a part of your immune system your bone marrow your lymph nodes your lymphatic vessels which go throughout your body your uh, pious patches which are in your small intestine lymph lymph nodes in your small intestine your spleen your thymus and your tonsils so your tonsils in your mouth so your lymphatic system your tonsils they act as like a big garbage bin that they're supposed to remove all the junk in your body and it also regulates the fluid in your body your lymphatic system so when your body is dehydrated or clogged then this lymphatic system cannot move and it cannot get rid of all this these harmful substances and then you can get diseases that start so the first kind of recommendation is to not be dehydrated so do not consume things that will dehydrate your body only consume things that will rehydrate so f um, things like coffee will dehydrate your body um, animal products will dehydrate your body because they require a lot of fluid to be able to be digested and to be absorbed highly processed carbohydrates require a lot of fluid to be absorbed and to be broken down and to be um, taken up into your body one part of um, processed carbohydrates or like a white flour will require two to three fluid or water molecules to be absorbed and to be processed into your body um, so you need to consume rehydrating foods to keep your lymphatic system moving I've also done a previous video also about the lymphatic system specifically so your lymphatic system l works together with the nodes and the vessels and the white blood cells so it's also moving the white blood cells throughout your body to help repair so it it helps to manage the fluid levels in your body so if your body is dehydrated your lymphatic system is the first one that will suffer so your garbage system your waste removal system is the first one to suffer when you are dehydrated or when you're consuming things that are dehydrating your body so they also react to bacteria and viruses and that's what's trying to get rid of it so when you get sick when you get a cold or a flu that's your lymphatic system trying to get rid of a bacteria or a virus it's moving mucus and it's getting trying to get rid of that um, bacteria or the virus when your mucus is clear that means it's getting rid of something so it's good when your mucus is clear when your mucus is green or yellow that means your lymphatic system has been stagnant and that has become putrid and infected and it's become gr like a, a pus it's started getting sick because it's been stagnant and sitting in one place so it's the bacteria has been able to grow and mutate and you've gotten this thick um, mucus that's now turned a different color because of sitting in one place and putrefying basically 
So when that happens, your body then is able to get rid of it. So that when you get sick and you get all this junk out, that means your body over the last many, however many months, has been stagnant and has not been able to get rid of all the toxins efficiently. So it has to then you get a cold or a flu because your body, your lymphatic system has been stagnant and then it reaches its limit and it has to empty out. It has to try and get rid of it. So the goal is to try and not <laughs> let your lymphatic system be stagnant. It has to move so that your mucus stays clear and that it stays moving. So for example, a little child, when babies start getting sick, then you know that something has been introduced to them that is harmful, that is not good, that their body is trying to get rid of it. So if a child is continually sick and a runny nose, then you are giving it something that you shouldn't. So for example, a baby being weaned off breast milk and going on to cow's milk formula or starting to eat animal products, that child will get sick and will get lots and lots of mucus and will get colds and flu and um, reflux and colic. Those are all symptoms of a lymphatic system that's being strained and it's trying to get rid of things that are not good for the body. Okay, so your, your lymphatic system eliminates waste. So if your mucus is clear when it's coming out, that's a good sign. Um, <clears throat> Usually that will happen in the mornings because you've been at rest, your body has repaired. So in the morning when you wake up, then it will clear out. So in a warm shower will also help to get rid of that. And gargling will help to get rid of some phlegm and some things that are stuck as well. The mucus that's stuck in your lymphatic system. So gargling will also help with that. Then in your bone marrow, your bone marrow is what produces your red blood cells and your white blood cells and also produces the platelets that help your blood uh, clot and help your blood maintain its fluidity inside of your body. So your bone marrow needs to be healthy, it needs to have all the nutrition it needs to create the red blood cells and white blood cells and it has to have a fluid. Again, dehydration is terrible for your body. Your all your systems need hydration. So to make blood cells, you need fluid and you also need the right nutrients. So if your body hasn't gotten all the nutrients, then it cannot produce the white blood cells and the red blood cells, and you can also become sick. Then your thymus gland is which produces your T lymphocytes. So it's a different kind of immune cell that will go and fight. So it's part of your, um, What's the other part of your immune system? Your adaptive immune system. So I've talked about the innate immune system. Your adaptive immune system is the one that adapts, that recognizes certain bacteria and viruses. It stores that information and the next time you get it again, it can more easily fight it because it recognizes it. It knows this is foreign. It knows what it did the last time to kill it so it can do it more effectively. So that's why some people believe in vaccines because you're introducing the disease, your body will fight against it, build up like a memory, and then it will fight it more easily the next time. So you build up an immunity against this disease. So for example, chickenpox, if you've had it once, your body knows what it is and it won't get sick of it again because it can fight it um, so easily this time. Okay, so it produces antibodies, um, your adaptive immune system. So antibodies just means you, you recognize this foreign material and your body can easily then defeat this germ or this um, pathogen. So it's an acquired or a learned response. So your body learns and it can then defeat this pathogen more easily. So mucus is also everywhere. So the mucus is what helps your body move around its immunity or its immune system, the antibodies, the T lymphocytes, the B lymphocytes, and your white blood cells. It helps it move around the body. Um, so you find mucus everywhere, in your mouth, in your nose, in your lungs, in your digestive tract. You can even get it in, in your skin or under your skin, your saliva, the skin oil. Your tears are also a kind of a mucus that protects you. And you also have antibacterial enzymes in your intestine. So those are 
some things about how the immune system works, how it reacts, some things that can help your immune system. As I said, um, I've done a few videos about the immune system and the lymphatic system and how you can support it and help it. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoy this. If you like it, subscribe, share, like, comment, leave me a comment in the, in the description. I'm open for suggestions. You can always leave something for me to think about. Then yeah, have a wonderful day. See you next time.